Sara, and I lead the Institute for Transmedia Design, which is based in Slovenia. But instead of going into what we do as an institution, I'm going to present two cases, uh, two of the works that have been done by my team. They are way different. The first one connects to a documentary film directed by Roman Bondarchuk, and the other one connects to an animation, to the stories that teach children on how to destigmatize stigma. They tackle the topic of sexual abuse, physical, mental. But let's start with the story of the Ukrainian sheriffs. So what is it about? There is a small village in Ukraine which is so remote from everything else. It's called Staras Buryevka. It's really near the Crimea, on the border with Russia. And what happens with their police? If you live in Ukraine and you live in a small village, you don't have a police there. So if a crime happens, the police doesn't want to come, or they come after two hours when the crime is done, or they even ask you, well, we will come, but you have to pay for the gas. So one smart major found a solution. He named Viktor and Volodya as the sheriffs of the village. He gave them a power to really solve everything, all the injustices happening in there. And when the crew started to film this story, we thought it's going to be a film, like a comedy, you know, like everyday duty. But then the war started, and it completely changed our course. So in this film, we see one community, one village, coming together and trying to help each other to make it as less hurtable as possible. Pipo! Necesita apoyo. <laughs> ¿Cómo está? Ah, vale, gracias. <laughs> Trailer, to let you know how the story feels. Добрый вечер, мои дорогие старозборівчани и не старозборівчани. Село є таким, яким є ті люди, які живуть в цьому селі. От старозборівка така, як і ми. Документы ему отдайте и все. А кто будет за дверь вставлять? Так, Григорий, все, мы, мы лежим по-любовно все. Все, пить будем? Да, конечно. Давай! Коля, подожди. Ты можешь остановиться или нет? По-моему. Без детства уже сказали, что давай в телясь уже. Ты понимаешь, здесь тоже есть процедура. Да, все, все, я могу. Валерий, а ему опять повестка. Ну я не... Держи! С каких? Тут. Пишли. Ты, ты сделала кражу, друг мой. Ты сделала кражу, все ли ради сделала? Я хейкер. Наш, ты же не стирай. Не дай мне пальто, пальто. пальто. Да ты где же тут делаешь? Да ты моя распоясалась. Без тебя, садись. Нет. Это как бы скинулось со всей на похороны тех, кто ей трахал. Это просто какие похороны были. Да, ты что бы. И гроб можно было бы тут таки купить за три тысячи. С ручками.
So at first, when we started to develop a transmedia strategy, we started with an audience. Who does this story belong to and who do we want to focus on? So we said our priorities are the other local communities, the citizens and the villages and the local authorities who can make a change in Ukraine. The ones the story belongs to. We want to give it as an example of good practice so maybe other mayors could see it and implement the same method. But then we said, okay, we don't want to neglect international audience which has an interest in social and political topics. And because the war in Ukraine was such a hot topic, we had a model to deliver it further. So then we asked ourselves, okay, but where and how will we distribute this? So we said, okay, if our focus is Ukraine, and then our nearby markets, where the main producer, Uldis Sekulis, comes from, the Baltic countries, uh, we can go even further. And we thought, okay, who had a war and who is connected to this topic? So we said the Balkan region will be the one that will the most easy identified with. We had suffered the war. We can really connect and maybe help them overcome it. And then the other European countries, as Germany, France, Sweden, and Poland, where all the other co-producers come from. And then we said, okay, because we said this story belongs to local audience, what is the best way to distribute to really remote villages? So we said, there isn't any cinematic culture there, so we could do travel cinema events, so we could just, you know, put up a screen, invite villagers, and start to open up the dialogue to see how they're facing the issues. So we had more than 100 travel cinemas going on around Ukraine. And then we said, okay, then the web platform can be like the medium where we can present the story and it can support us in all the manners. And then the social media communication. So many fake news appeared. So we said, but we can communicate with no bias. We can really share the citizens' news and help them support it. And then, okay, theatrical distribution to help us promote it in all the other countries. But we said, okay, once we want to do an event in Slovenia, we don't want to go just in an ordinary theater. So we went to void spaces, to abandoned spaces, to give them a new content and try to revitalize them through different creative practices. And then we said, but what could we do further? Like, there is something when you take out so much from the villagers, you want to give something back. So we said we could design a crowdsourcing campaign, a donation model, which will help us give back something to the community. This is just the example of a small web doc with a map of Staras Buryevka, and then showcasing that you could go through small videos to protagonists to see the screening, the authors, and the story behind it. And what happened? We had really scarce resources and we needed to start to tweet. So we said, okay, but we still don't have the information from Ukraine, like we didn't start to develop it yet. So we said, what, what could we do? And we started with tweeting out the sentences and the scenes from the scenario. So it will open up the topic and kind of way start the dialogue. And we said, okay, if someone starts to follow us, we're gonna send him a private message, a personal message, asking, do you wanna feel our story? So here's the link, just watch it. Majority of our users came back with a comment of really appreciating, of distributing the content, and they could attach to us. So this is just a few pictures from the theatrical distribution, because what we else do, we requested all of the Wherever we could, we took our sheriffs with us. Because none of us could speak about the story in the way they could do it. So they were the protagonists traveling with us to Poland. Now they're going to China. They're going to present their story there, so all can feel it how it does. And what happened next? The strategy was set up. We gained the Itva Berta Fund. It was the first transmedia project they decided to support. And we got the notice we were in a race for, for the Oscar Academy Award. 
It was a kind of a win-lose situation. Whatever we did, we needed to bond. Our strategy didn't include academy members. We had no knowledge of the American market and we didn't know the mechanics, how do they work. So we had to stop. All our resources left were allocated to the states to design screening events. We had like seven screening events. We got a PR manager, we had our Bob, we had a new team which said, okay, the way you communicate in Europe doesn't work for the States, so you need to change it. So what we had to do, we had to put all our auras and awards that the film gained, and we had to start really promoting the film like as lousy marketing. They advised us to do that, so we lost. And we didn't get an Oscar, but then we gave the knowledge no one could give us. Whew. And now I switched to... I switched to my favorite, my baby project. So I'm gonna switch from the real side of the story into my team's fantasies. We call it Twisted Tales. And I'm gonna showcase the Cinderella, one of the series. But what is it about? This is the project that teaches children on the stigmatized the stigma. And it uses a variety of mediums. It uses TV series, it uses educational apps, RAVR exhibition and web as a space of communication and the dialogue. But before I go into it, I need to tell you about how this project was born, because it was a small prototype, we never knew it's gonna grow. At that time, we call it Stigmarella, the story about a shoe and a girl. This is my colleague and my dear friend, Renata Ajman. It was the year 2013 or 14 when she approached me and said, Sara, I'm delivering my fourth book. This one is the hardest. In this book, I speak about me being abused, sexually abused by my stepfather. I can't do a PR campaign, but I know my book needs to reach the largest audience possible. Can you help me out? And I was like, like, what to do with the book that speaks about sexual abuse? Like, I live in Slovenia. I live in a country where no one wants to talk about abuses. You know, it's such an ugly stuff. We can just put it inside the carpet. So I set up a team of 25 volunteers to start to work on a concept. What we did, we did a heavy research for more than six months. We went to all the psychiatrist offices, we went to the journalists, we did the interviews, we examined all the communication tools they use and the manner in which they communicate. We even made scenarios in which we would call institutions and pretending that we have a cousin that is really suffering from mental illness and asking them like how to prevent the hospitalization. And what happened? They shouted at us, just call the police, call the police, hospitalize them. But we said, we don't want, we want to work on the prevention. So when we withdraw all the research data together, we notice we cannot change the system as designers, but we can reply as one who can work on the prevention. So we said, okay, if you look at the education, how the kids are educated, like the stories stigmatize, like, I as a girl was born and taught on the Cinderreel, which at the end teaches me to wait in a castle for a prince to be saved. So do we really want to do that? So what we did, we used the familiar narrative of the story and integrated the topic of stigma inside of it. So in our first story, our Cinder didn't have a leg, and her only intention to come to the dance was to dance, not to marry a prince. So we said, okay, but what's next? How to, how to build like a place where people could come and we could promote like both concepts and the book. And we said like the public space is the best for us. So we used an exhibition space as a space of interaction and further engagement. So we designed a place to play. 
we created gigantic origami uh, figures out of the cardboard, imitating blank papers of the book that were given out to the children to draw on it. We animated some small parts, uh, so the children, like only the main parts where the story changed, and we integrated it into a place so the children could understand it. But how we, oh, I want to go back. Oh, here it is. How we started the participatory project. We couldn't design the characters on our own, so we designed a workshop in which we invited children to draw a prince and a princess. They can be dirty, they can be ugly, they can be naughty, they can have holes on its pants. Just pretend whoever you want to be, you are. So then we took them as the basis for this animation uh, and started to develop it further. But we had no money. This was done without of the budget at all. We invested our own so we could buy the cardboard, etc. And then we said, okay, but what can we do with an exhibition if no one knows about it? So we took a gigantic shoes on a journey with the bus. Why? because the majority of our target audience is either on the bus station or in the buses. And this allowed us to create a dialogue and to promote what is to come. So what we did next, we designed several roundtable events to help us open up the topic on our market. So we invited psychiatrists, we invited journalists, we invited Renata to promote the book. We even had a questionnaire, we had observation, we asked them a lot. So at the end, majority of nursery teachers and parents asked us where can they download the full version of the animated film? And we said, there is no one. They were really disappointed because they wanted to use it as a tool in the educational approach. And yes, this project did gain the main award of the Biennale for the best event. So what happened next? We tried to apply it in Slovenia to different fundings, and we were refused. As soon as they heard the topic of stigma, it was, no, this is too traditional, it doesn't fit, no, 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 no. So we abandoned the project. I was spending my holidays in Thailand, and we were in Bangkok. It was early morning, and all of my friends left. I was the only one who stayed because I had a later flight. And I received the message, Renata made a suicide. The stigma was too strong. She couldn't handle it. Like she delivered her biggest pain of the abuse, she managed to reach an audience to spread the world about her stigma. But that was it. It left me in such a pain and grief, and it left me with wondering about new stigma of death that is caused by this kind of violence. So I returned back. I set up a new team, trying to figure out, like, where could I find best screenwriter? So I touched Yasmina Kalai to the project. I'm a nominated writer. I tried to search for co-producer on French market in Portugal, etc. And we started to develop it. Like, let's see what's good and what is bad. So what came out? Cinderella. We said we want to go deeper. And in this story, our Cinder doesn't have a whole lack and she's faced with facing this disability of stigma within herself, with her family, and with her community. So how do we do it? Like, Cinda at the beginning has clutches, and she walks on clutches, and of course she wants to reach the ball. But once the invitations are out, like the crowd really hits her, so she falls. She somehow gets an invitation and scrolls to the woods, where she falls asleep. And then the fairy godmother comes and she takes her to her small house and she inspires her to make herself a wooden leg. So Cinda makes a wooden leg and she tries, but she's not good at first attempts, but then she makes it. She comes to the dance and she dances like she never did before. And then she runs away, but the prince runs after her trying to marry her, I'm so in love with you. But she neglects him, saying, no, my only intention was to come to the dance to dance. 
and because she has been so abused by her stepsister and stepmother and without father seeing it, like when she comes home, he, her father was so sick of worrying, like and to show how really he feels the grief, he kicks out the stepmother and stepsister so they live a happily life ever after. So what we do, we're now, we're still in the process of development. These are just the sketches of characters of the process we want to use. So we continued with the participatory process. So we asked a lot of the kindergartens to do the workshops for us, to donate us the drawings so we could use them in the environment. But then we got further, like we couldn't use just one. So we said, okay, we really want children to feel this participatory action. So we take eye from one picture and then the hair from the other, etc. And then we said, okay, this is the animation like, what is the education? So we are designing an app together with our French co-producer, Small Bank, Pierre Catan, uh, which gives to the user the main character without the lack. So the challenge of this app is to draw a perfect lack. So once a child draws a leg, you either receive a clip from the animation where Cinda is baking pancakes, but she falls. But if you manage to draw a perfect leg, you are awarded with a dance. And then what further? We said, okay, like, you know, as children, we were so fed up with education. Let's create a playground. Let's refer to the first thing and the prototype we had. Like public space, exhibitional space was so good for interaction. Can we go further and can we use a new technology to introduce it to, to the children? So we said we're going to design a participatory project again where you could use a paintbrush and add your own story into ours and get engaged deeper into it. But this is just the Cinderil. Oh, let me say how to promote it, yeah. None of this would be of use if we didn't think about how to distribute this story. And we said, okay, we want to invite famous musicians in each country to speak about their stigma of disability and open up the topic so we could, and they would perform for a social cause and then we could like, you know, use their already built audiences to attract and to gain visibility for our project. It has been done, it's not innovative, but it's really powerful. And then what else? Direct communication with kindergartens because it proved so successful. Social media communication, PR and advertising. And then what's next? All of this allows us to tackle and to go deeper into the stories. So we designed twisted tales, tackling different topics of stigma. So in the Physical is done in Cinderil, mental in real Punzel, racial in not so ugly duckling. So let me just give you a brief insight on not so ugly duckling. This is one of my favorites. So the white swans represent the white community and the ducklings represent the black community. So the duckling, so the swan is living with the duckling community, really like dancing all the Afro dances, etc., living that culture. And one day he noticed he's not really like them. So he runs away, he searched for the white community. And when he, once he reaches it, he sees it's really so privileged and a bit boring for him. So what he does, he takes few of his new friends and he goes back to the duckling community. And it ends like they all merge and they live happy together. And if you ask us, why do we do it? It's because one, <sighs> nah, just living is not enough. One must have sunshine, freedom, and a little flower. And it's our flower that we wish to give to make the, the place healthier and to live better lives. Thank you. Bravo, Sara. Wow.
Es un hermoso homenaje a Renata, el que This is diciendo, beautiful homage you are leading to eh, Renata. This is a really moving story. Para, para como, And I think it is interesting to us medios, as communicators, as media professionals. Atrás, uh, two or three slides ago, you mentioned años, what the target audience is. Five to ¿no? eight year olds, their decir, parents and schools. That is to say, there is a clear eh, definition of the audience and of the teachers. We have seen a fully de, massive de, de case uh, with that of Sweden and large companies and this is a very segmented claro audience a, with a clear a la, a la goal of helping de, de to stigmatize certain people and this is the creation eh, of a tool to such ends. So I consider this to be very interesting because any of you creating products will not always be doing for massive audiences. Sometimes we do it for Uh, segmented ones. Ukrainian Sheriff was for open, massive audiences. Cinderella Real is for segmented ones. And this is what we see in this universe they have defined. We have less time before, because we have exceeded ourselves. Uh, the floor is open to questions. Mics are circulating. In the meantime, let me ask you something. Uh, Did the Ukrainian Oscar, sheriff stop se, se when paró. you were nominated for the yes. Oscar and that was stopped? Um, unfortunately, like Slovenian market, it's probably like yours. Like uh, we have been, as Institute for Transmedia Design, we have been fighting with our film center and our Ministry of Culture for four years to recognize us. And it was just a month ago that we received first national funding. We received a lot of the European funding, but we couldn't get one. So when I approached them and asked to give us the national funding to support this project, I was rejected on all levels, and I couldn't even get a dialogue. So what we do, like, I hope that all those little steps and with, that, with being really like recognized now in Europe and we do a lot of work with the Creative Europe desk that we will be able to change it but it's a hell of a fight. So the answer is we have no funding so we can continue it. Nonetheless, we would love to. Okay, wow. Preguntas? <laughs> Questions Hi. from the audience? Um, I think that it's really valuable what you're doing around stigma and also bringing these new medias and new ways of storytelling to children. But I would like to know if you have any plans on expanding to other generations or other targets, because I think that um, pointing towards children, it's like a more a long-term uh, Like the results will be seen in a longer term, and if you have like an older audience that you would like to reach, and how you would like to reach them, or through which stories. Do you mean in general, not connected to this? Like uh, connected what you to showed, new cases, what we do. What you showed about uh, Cinderella was, uh, and the other tales were mostly for children and their parents. Do you yes. have any other? like aspirations to go beyond the children No, target? with this project, no. Because if we want to work on the prevention, we need to start to re-educate children. So this is our manner on how we do it. I have started with a small prototype and I went through Cinderella to the Twisted Tales to show you the sustainability of the project and how it can develop in a long term. But this is like, we needed like four years to get the first funding in Slovenia, and we will need 20 years to try to re-educate. We are aware of it, so this is why we always start with small steps and then see where they can lead us. Because I've noticed that I, as a person, am very energetic, and I needed years to learn to not attack the people because I would go, oh, you know, I want to do this, 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 and I would scare them, they would be like, Stop. Uh, so it's the same. If you want to change something and you do it like this, you can't do it. But if you change a manner and you start to re-educate re with the positive motivation, really gentle one, maybe in a way still manipulative, because people are not knowing what you're doing, then you can gain huge results. Otherwise, you're just scared, as other people were scared at me. 
Última pregunta. ¿Alguna más? Any other questions? Sí. Where? Here? Bueno, no, sí, yo, yo coincido absolutamente. Yes, I eh, fully agree with this. I have had a foundation and I have worked on behavioral changes, uh, communication and preventing and prevention. And I think uh, children are the essential carriers to do so because they are also the best channels to reach adults. They can change us and not uh, no, uh, as yo, ourselves. Eh, This is easier. I, I'm a documentarist, and I was uh, really captivated by Ukrainian cómo, sheriff. Cómo so I wanted to ask you, how did you choose the subject, and then how did you get funding for that? I don't know if I didn't get that part, or it ended up being just the audiovisual product, right? Or was there any other transmedia resolution beyond the one you wanted that did not succeed at? We were lucky because uh, ITVA, it's like the human rights festival that it's run in Amsterdam and has this funding called ITVA Berta Fund. And it's devoted to support the project that connects Europe with, they call it like third world countries. So because the Ukraine isn't considered Europe for them, but it's the third world, we were able to apply it. So together we had like so many Skype sessions with team. So we were like, the strategy was designed through the dialogue. And once the strategy was really clear, we applied it. And then after a while, they gave us a notion that this is the first transmedia project for the international distribution that they funded. Uh, so this is how we started. But we always, like, the majority of the work was done, some in Ukraine, some in Latvia, some in Germany, some in Slovenia. So we just managed to coordinate teams. Did I answer? Bueno, yeah. okay. Gracias, Sara. Gracias. gracias Muchísimas gracias. Gracias. No tenemos más tiempo. Muchas gracias.